Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over how uh, I added throttle curves on a switch to my Tango 2. And uh, I'm doing this on my Tango 2 because this is my one and only, my first ever and my only ever uh, OpenTX type radio. And I say type radio because I know that this uh, Tango 2 runs Freedom TX, which is supposed to be a fork of OpenTX. And I say it's supposed to be because I am not familiar with OpenTX, so I can't even compare. So that's that's how very uh, little know I know about OpenTX. Um, but from what I understand, they're they're at this point in time uh, since the Tango Two just came out. Uh, at this point in time, they're actually uh, very similar, is uh, what I've, I'm reading. So, okay. So I searched and searched and searched, and I found a bunch of places where um, you can find out how to put a throttle curve on your um, model, but that's permanent. Only one throttle curve. But what I really wanted was throttle curve on a switch, so that so that if I'm flying, uh, and these these are really for my whoops or or freestyle. So if I'm flying like a whoop, uh, I tend to bind all my crossfire models to one model in the radio. Uh, I just like doing that sort of the switch models and stuff, and it works really well because these days most of your settings are in. Betaflight. So your PIDs, your rates, and everything is in Betaflight. So you don't have to switch models to change things. Like you don't you don't need dual rates and expo and all that stuff anymore. Except for throttle curve. Now Betaflight does have a throttle curve, but it's a simple uh, a simple single curve throttle curve. But what I like to use, especially for my naked cinemoops, which uh, I, I like to build those, what I like to use are S curves. So if I'm flying uh, in, indoors or outdoors or what have you, and, I, and I'm having a difficult time keeping my um, altitude at a certain level, it's not because uh, of, a, of a simple curve. You can mess, mess with that all you want, but what really helps is if, is if you have more resolution, like right here in the middle, that way you can fine tune your altitude. Like if you're hovering right at 40%, and then a little bit past that, you start to increase in altitude. And then, if you're usually when you're when you're not hovering, when you're flying forward, you have to go a little bit past your hover point because your vector, your thrust vector, is now tilted. Uh, you have a little bit of forward momentum and upwards uh, thrust, so you have to go a little bit higher. And at that point, you need to let's say you're at fifty percent, you need to modulate a little bit. But if you if you have too much reaction for very little stick movement, you're going to have a hard time keeping your altitude. Uh, and this is important for those nice cinematic shots or indoor real estate shots or whatever. So uh, what you want is you want very little altitude change for more movement on, of your stick. And that's why I like to use S curves. Betaflight doesn't do that. So that has to be in the radio. And because I buy more than one quad to my radio, I like to be able to switch. Oops. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to be able to switch curves from the radio. So... As I plug in a battery for a different quad, I can just flick a switch and boom, I have a different throttle curve. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, let's make sure the screen isn't too bright. Okay, uh, I've got this model too. Now, I'm not gonna go and do all of it. That'll take forever, but I'm gonna show you what I did do. All right, so let's see if I can remember this. Um, first thing I did uh, somewhere on one of these later pages is the actual curve. Here you go. So I created three curves. I called it T1, T2, and T3. Throttle 1, 2, and 3. Throttle 1 is a simple 5-point curve. It could be even be a 3-point curve because it's linear. You just need 0, 50, and 100, right? But I put 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. Um, and you can choose a standard curve or a complex curve or a custom curve. A custom curve allows you to choose... Let's see if I can edit this. So if, you, if I did like a custom, then you can change your X points. Uh, but I'm okay with the uh, horizontal points that it gives you. So it's just, it just splits it up into five points, right? Um, so along the X, you have um, 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. And then on the, um, let's see where, so I, I added smooth. Okay, so there you go. So obviously, um, it's just going to go from negative 100, negative 50, 0, 50 to 100. That is your standard linear curve, and that's what I'll fly. Like, if I fly a race quad or something, or a freestyle freestyle quad, I'll just use that. And I might even add a little bit of a curve with a zero midpoint in Betaflight, and like a 15% curve. That way you have a 
a little less sensitivity down low. But for these cinematic ones, I want um yeah. How do I change this? Uh, I want to go to my here we go. All right. A little stand so my radio stays straight. Okay, this is the curve. So I've got two of these. This one is for notice that the hover point I, I pulled the curve down a little bit, uh, and that's because, uh, like it's got a lot of power. Like I fly this uh, 95X on 4S and it's got a lot of power, so I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want the um, so at mid stick. You'll notice that it's reducing. It's not as much power. It's not a 50%. It's slightly less. Because this 4S 95X has so much power. Not so much, but in, in a little bit more than than what I want. So uh, I want more resolution down low. So, um, or I'm sorry, with, with my stick a little bit higher, right? Which gives me, uh, where my thumb naturally goes to like 50%. I can control it better there. Um, so that's... So you want to reduce your overall curve if you have more power. If you have less power, like this one, like I fly an 85X, and it's a little bit weak, so I want it to output more than where my stick actually is. So at 50% where my stick would be, you'll notice that the output is actually a little bit higher than 50%. But nonetheless, it's a little bit flatter in the center. That gives me more control in the center of the stick range. So as I'm moving it like right here, it'll have less of an effect and I can control the altitude timer again and I can control the altitude uh, with more precision okay all right um, so the first like I said the first thing I did was create these um, throttle 1 T1 is just a five-point curve T2 is what is that 11 11 point curve and again I didn't choose custom because I figure with 11 points there's enough uh, you know resolution there's enough enough points where I can define the curve pretty well uh, I think you can go all the way up to like 13 or 15 points but 11 11 is pretty good even 7 is probably pretty good if you have that smoothing on and then I created that t3 so I'm not going to do that you can figure out how to create these curves yourself they're not it's not that difficult uh, it's the assigning to a switch that's the tricky part okay so once I did that let's get out of here um, go back into the menu okay so once I did that I then created let's see flight modes okay and I'll say this right away or well it's not, um, I should have said this in the beginning there's probably a better way to do this I don't know what it is because I couldn't find any information nobody had instructions on how to do this I found a PDF on people using OpenTX for helicopters and of course helicopters have throttle curves with flight modes you've got normal throttle idle one idle two uh, but even there, there seemed like there was a section missing. It was a, uh, there was, it didn't really show you how to assign the curves to the switch. So that part was completely missing. So I kind of had to figure this out on my own. And if somebody has a better way to do this, uh, you know, send me a link. I couldn't find one. Okay, so I created uh, flight modes. I created a flight mode on switch B, which on the Tango is the left side here. And I've got Acro, Horizon, and turtle mode so that's my flight mode one two and three uh, on switch b so i wanted the throttle curve on switch c which is on this side here i know it's dark but it's on this side here um, and i wanted three throttle curves the three that i showed you so i created flight mode four five and six right and i named them th throttle one two and three and then you can go in here and if you hold it down uh, and edit it you can define what switch it is so see how it's bold because it's switches down it's active when it's bold and this flight mode is not active in the other two positions so that's all that bold means but here if you click on this you can actually define the switch so like if i click on this and put it in the middle and then say yes this flight mode will be active when the switch is in the middle but obviously i don't want that so i'm going to put it down so flight mode one throttle one is when the switch is down all right so, create those three. Create those three new flight modes. Let me get out of here. Okay, flight mode four, five, and six, throttle, curve one, two, and three. Now, next thing is the throttle input. So, these two lines are new. Throttle now has three lines. Initially, throttle had one line. If you click on throttle, just let me show you with aileron. If I click on aileron, 
single short click. Oh, whoops. Right? And then that's a short click. And then scroll down, it's going to add another line. I don't know what this function is in OpenTX, I'm going to be honest. But that's what I did. I'm going to exit out here. That's what I did for throttle. I did a short click. It added a new line. And again, I'm not going to do it. And then uh, I created two new lines. So you'll see what's happening there. It shows you four, five, and six. And that's what I'm going to get into. So on this first line, long press, edit. And here you can see uh, it's input throttle, right? Um, here, what did I change? Curve custom T1, right? Now here's the tricky part. Okay, this is active, right? So this, this curve, T1 throttle curve 1, is going to be active in these flight modes. 0, 1, and 2, which is all three positions of my left switch, right? Because I don't want the, flight, the throttle curve flight mode to change based on this switch. So I want it always active on 0, 1, and 2. Right, but I also so if you click on this, you can edit and like you can. Um, so if I highlight one and then click it, it'll remove it. So at this point right now, it won't be active in horizon mode. But well, why would I want that? So I want it in all three modes, the thr throttle curve. And honestly, I probably don't really need it in turtle mode, but that's okay. Whatever. Okay. Now here's the tricky part. So. Um, What's actually mode zero? I don't know what mode zero is. Uh, mode so mode one, two. I'm sorry, mode one, two, and three. So flight mode one is acro, two is horizon, three is turtle, and then I want it active in flight mode four and only flight mode four, right? So five and six are not selected. If I selected it in five, this throttle curve would be active in both flight mode four and five, but that's not what I want. I only want this in flight mode. Four combined with all the other flight modes one, two, and three. I know that's confusing, but flight mode four is what is assigned to that one position on switch C. That's what's important. All right, let's get out of here. And then I did it again. If you highlight this throttle, short click, it'll create another one. So I created another one. And if you long press and edit that one, you'll see this one is throttle curve 2 flight mode active only again while in all uh, the flight modes 1 2 and 3 on switch B but only in flight mode 5 on switch C so if you go in here you disable flight mode 4 right it was like this I disabled it I also disable flight mode 6 so it's only flight mode 5 Okay, so throttle curve two. Now watch what happens. That's two, right? This is th uh, throttle curve one, throttle curve two, throttle cur curve three. Only throttle curve two will take effect in flight mode five. Likewise, finally, for the last one, throttle curve um, three. Oops, now I want to do a long press, edit. And then you can see that the throttle curve 3 takes place in flight mode 6. Um, and I may experiment. I may remove the other flight modes just to see what happens. But anyway. Okay. Um, so. Those, let's see. Throttle curve. Yeah. So that's all I needed really, I think. Let's check the other pages. I added the flight modes. I added it to the throttle. Um... I didn't have to do anything here. Of course, these are my switches for buzzer flight, uh, my uh, flight normal flight modes for Acro, Horizon, and Turtle. Uh, I added an arm switch and a pre-arm switch. Um, and then my curves. And that's really it. Okay, yes, yeah, so that took care of that. Now, if you look, so here's the... This is how I knew it was working. If you look at the, this is the throttle output screen, right? Or the, I'm sorry, the control output screen on uh, on the Tango 2. Um, so here's here's my throttle moving, right? I'm going to put it quarter. Actually, here, let me do this. Uh, this is at quarter stick. All right, flight mode one, we know that quarter stick, the output is 25%. It's linear. 
25% stick, 25% throttle. Now, if I go to flight mode one, that one was lower, so the output should be lower. What was higher? Throttle three was higher. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so I just forgot myself. So it's not lower because I didn't just lower the whole curve. I made it an S curve. So it's going to be higher at the 25%. And then in uh, throttle curve uh, uh, three, it's going to be even higher. Okay, now here's the trick. Back to throttle curve one. Put it at mid stick. 50% will be 50% upward. Now, throttle curve one, uh, two will be lower. And there it is, there's lower. Throttle curve three should be higher because I raised the whole curve. And there it goes, it's a little bit higher. So you can see the effects right there, and I know it's working. Uh, plus, I feel it when I fly it. When I flick the switch, I can totally, you know, I gain and lose altitude as I go through the throttle curve. So, Okay, so that's basically it. So that's how I know it works. All right, let's review just to make sure. Um, Okay, first thing I did, I go into the curves page, create my three throttle curves, okay? Linear, uh, 95x, 85x. Gives me more control hovering or flying uh, same altitude. All right, I did that. And then I went into the flight modes. Created three new flight modes: throttle one, throttle two, throttle three, uh, three, and assign them to the switch positions. Uh, you can see that this one says SC down, switch C down, switch C flat uh, in the middle, switch C up. All right, assign those. And then I went into my throttle and added three new throttle. I don't know what these three new throttle inputs, I guess, um, but assign them to flight modes corresponding to the uh, throttle curves. So flight mode, you can see it flashing. Switch C down, flight mode four. Switch C in the middle, flight mode five. Switch C up, flight mode six. And, and those get assigned to the throttle curve one, two, and three. And that's how it gets switched with the throttle curve. Okay, so that is it. And again, I'll say it one more time. There might be a better way to do this. I had to figure this out on my own. It took me like almost three hours, um, but I was able to finally do it. So, all right, there you go.